What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Caddy Network's Under the Strap podcast. I'm your host, TJ Oclair, Director of Content for the Caddy Network. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Caddy Network. This week, we're happy to welcome caddies Kenny Harms and Crispy Jones, two guys who were in Fort Worth last week for the tour's restart after a 12-week hiatus due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Harms, as always, was on the bag for Charles Schwab Challenge's 2019 champion, Kevin Na, while Jones caddied for Jimmy Walker. Today, we're going to hear all about what the first week of the new normal was like on the PGA Tour, so let's get started. Uh, Kenny, I just want to start with you as the defending caddy champion. Um, had to be a little different uh, compared to other events where you've been the defending caddy champion with no fans or anything like that, but... I know you and Kevin had to be pretty excited to see his name on that wall of champions. So can you tell us what that was like? Oh, the wall of champions is awesome. Actually, when I got there to walk the golf course on Monday, I took a picture of it. Um, and then uh, the other thing, which is pretty cool, is they have the big leaderboard on 18. They've got Hogan up on top, and then they got 2019, 18, 17. So Kevin's name was right below Ben Hogan. Uh, four-time champion, which was which was pretty cool. And it's always a great thing to go back to the golf course he won the last year at. So it was a good week. Uh, unfortunately, it, it got cut short, but uh, here we are. Get to talk to you today. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, Crispy, I want to start with you. What was it like to get back to work after such a long layoff? Uh, it was pretty great to be back out working and caddying. Um, I was – at the beginning of the pandemic, when it, when it all stopped, I thought it was only going to be like six, seven weeks. And then it obviously turned into about three months. And uh, in the beginning, I was ready to be back out working right away, kind of not really liking being at home so much because I've never really done that. And then after a while, I got used to it and started enjoying being home and cooking all my meals and being around and doing whatever I wanted to do each day. Um, I got no wife or kids, so I kind of had a lot of freedom. But uh, once I knew we were coming back out, I was getting pretty excited. And uh, it, was, it was great to be back and uh, seeing all the players and caddies I hadn't seen in a while. And my boss, who I hadn't seen, to, seen at all and, uh, since the Players' Championship. And uh, just back to doing what I feel like I do best. So it was fun to be back. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenny, uh, we'll start with you on this one. And I think I know where you stand already, but I, I have to ask. With the spikes that we've seen in certain parts of the country, including Texas, was there any hesitation to get back to work on your part? Um, I don't want to say, I mean, it's a scary time that we're living in, an uncertain time. Was there any hesitation at all? Not at all. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I've, I know all the statistics, especially when it comes to younger age, uh, people in good health. Um, I think that the biggest thing is we need to quarantine the people that are older and have pre-existing conditions. Um, but for the healthy, I think that uh, we need to get the country back running. And I was all willing and able to get on that plane and come here. Not, not a worry in the world. I did wear a mask for the first time, which was mandatory to get on the plane. But, uh, you know, that wasn't too bad. It was only a two and a half hour flight from Orlando. So I was ready to rock and roll. Okay. Now tell us about that travel, guys. Uh, Crispy, you came in from Nevada, I believe. Unless did you go to pick up your van someplace first, or no? I came from, I left Reno Airport on uh, Sunday. Actually, it was uh, snowing in the Reno Tahoe <laughs> area when I left and showed up to 100 degrees uh, here in Fort Worth. Okay, so what was the travel like? Um, the airports, uh, I'm assuming, pretty much like a ghost town compared to what you're used to. Yeah, well, it was and it wasn't. I mean, it was not as busy at the airport overall, but my flight from Reno to Vegas and then Vegas on to uh, Love Field in Dallas were both full minus middle seats not occupied. Really? So that kind of shocked me that the flights were that full. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot more empty than just middle seats open. Um, so it was busier than I expected. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was different getting back to it. I did wear a mask, too. Um, I've been kind of being pretty cautious. I mean, I don't know what's right and what's wrong, and I don't think anybody really knows. But I just figured I'd be careful so I could work because I didn't want to come up as one of those test positives from the swab test when I showed up and be able to not caddy this week after three months off. Mm-hmm. Kenny, did you notice anything different about the airports or anything like that? Yeah, it was uh, Orlando was extremely, extremely, extremely dead. 
Um, usually you got 20 minute wait to go through, uh, um, security check checkpoint. Um, I think it might've been 10 seconds. Um, the plane, uh, to Dallas was, I would probably say quarter full. Um, I had empty seat. I actually got a, I was B12 and I still got an exit row all by myself. Um, all of the seats, when I walked back to the bathroom, there was a lot of people laying across all three, just sleeping. So I was very, I was a little bit more fortunate than Crispy. Um, and there was a little bit more traffic in Dallas airport at Love Field than it was at, uh, MCO in Orlando. Um, Mm -hmm. but you know, my nephew came and picked me up and, um, he came in and it was not the, a lot of traffic, but, uh, a little bit more than I was surprised after seeing Orlando being as dead as it was. Mm-hmm. I know the PGA tour uh, put in a, uh, I guess a, a thing early on where they said, we're going to give you these home test kits to take to decide if you, you're able to travel or not. They were optional, but they were strongly encouraged. Did both of you take those home kits and what was it like from the time you took it? What was the process? And then when did you find out your result and know it was okay to travel? Uh, Kenny, we'll start with you. Yeah, I got it. Um, I got it on a Friday, nine days before the tournament started, um, and I didn't do it until Monday. Um, just being that, if I took it on Friday, it wouldn't get there till Monday. And then the, my understanding is, is they need to get that test immediately within forty-eight hours or twenty-four hours, and then to get a, a more precise whether I'm. Um, COVID-19 positive or negative. So I sent it out on Monday, uh, Tuesday, I got a phone call. No, I have not a phone call, an email that they received it an hour later, it said I was negative. So it was pretty smooth, to be honest. Um, you know, I got on the phone with the lady to go through the whole uh, instructions. So it was a Zoom video like, like we're doing right now. Um, it took uh, probably about five minutes to get enough saliva up because it was in the morning and you weren't able to drink or eat anything an hour before. So uh, that was probably the hardest thing. I kept on looking. I'm like, all right, all right, we got to the top, all right? We're good to go. We sealed it up and we sent it out. It went over to the FedEx uh, drop box and, you know, they got it the next day. So it went smoothly. Crispy? Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as the test goes, same story as Kenny. Uh, the spit took a while with the no uh, no drinking. I I got mine on Thursday, I think. So it sounds like I got mine the day before Kenny got his. And uh, I woke up first. I'm on the West Coast, and I think it was available at like 8 a.m. East Coast time for Zoom meeting. So I woke up at 5 a.m. on Friday morning um, and got on and tried to get it done with right away. Um, and I got someone on at five, like 5, 10 a.m. West Coast time. I was doing the spit thing on the zoom with the nurse and uh, just kind of actually it's funny. I was like, you ever thought you'd be uh, watching somebody on zoom spit into a bottle? (laughs) (laughs) Like she's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to put this on my resume. (laughs) Um, So I did it Friday morning. First thing Um, I sealed it up. You do all that in front of them. I took it to the, actually had to wait till 9am till the FedEx opened by me in Reno dropped it off at 9 a.m. I went out and played golf. And uh, Saturday, I think by like 12, 1 o'clock my time, I had an email saying I was confirmed uh, negative, no corona in the spit test. Um, And so that was clear me to come on out to Fort Worth. Um, Another thing I don't know if people know, but if you didn't do that, uh, the, the tour highly suggested it It wasn't mandatory but if you didn't do the uh saliva test before you showed up and then you showed up and you test positive for corona with the swab then um you'd be on your own dime as far as quarantining hotel food and all that whereas if you did the saliva test and passed it and then showed up to fort worth and failed it they would help you out with your financials yeah, so certainly some incentive to, to do that take-home test or the at-home test. Um, so, Crispy, we'll start with you here again, but you land in Dallas. Take us through what was different from the time you landed to the time you got settled in at the course compared to a normal week 
up to and including this infamous nasal swab test that we've all heard about. And Kyle Peters, another caddy, actually shared with us video-wise. It didn't look too pleasant. Yeah, I landed on uh, Sunday evening around 6 o'clock p.m. And uh, our president, Scott Sajanak, picked me up. He was driving in from Houston, and him and I were going to room together this week since we were both kind of knew we were both clean and quarantining pretty well compared to maybe some other guys I've talked to and felt safe to stay together. Um, so he picked me up. We came back uh, to the hotel where we checked into the Omni here, which was the host hotel where the players are staying and some of the caddies are staying just to keep it easy. Um, we got settled in kind of the first night was weird. We, uh, we went to Chipotle that night for dinner. It was the first time I had had takeout or any food from a restaurant since March 14th and we both had it. We got it to go. We came back to the room. We, we ate and about 40 minutes later, we both felt like crap <laughs> and Sag is like, what's going on? I was like, it's gotta be the food, man. We've both been eating pretty healthy at home, cooking our own meals. And now all of a sudden we just pounded down a burrito bowl. Um, so um, get settled in. It was weird to be in a hotel room again for so long after uh, having a break, living in my own house for forever. And we woke up, uh, I don't know, about 7.30, 8 o'clock Monday morning. And first thing we did was went out to the Dickies Arena here at Fort Worth and uh, pulled in a parking lot. There wasn't many people there. We showed our ID. We uh, gave our birth date and our social security and they put us on a chair and stuck a swab up her nose and uh you know I, it was it was uncomfortable but i'm not gonna say it hurt and it wasn't that big a deal i think some guys make a big deal out of it i don't think it was that big a deal i could i could do that every week easily and not be bothered it made me tear up and uh it's a little uncomfortable but i've had a lot worse thing feelings in my life and then uh i waited about four hours and got a text saying uh, not detected and then i was able to go register at the course and get a wristband that they give us for the week to show that we passed. And, uh, I was back to work at normal, not too much different at the golf course. I didn't wear a mask on the course. There wasn't too many guys doing that. We were trying to be careful with the social distancing and, uh, you know, kind of work as normal after that. Mm -hmm. And Kenny, your situation was a little different. I know you're, you're staying at a friend's house this week. Um, but tell us about going to the course every day after the test. You guys were getting your temperature checked upon arrival. Is that how it was working? Uh, yeah, we, um, when we get there, I'm, I'm staying, I have Kevin staying with me with, at a friend's house. So we drive in on his courtesy car. And when you first pull up, they ask you two questions. Have you been around anybody? Have you have any symptoms? You say, no, no. They hit you in the head with their, their thermometer that, you know, they kind of points towards your head and, you know, they get the 97.8, I think it was 97.8 every single day. Um, and then you go in, you park, and we've got the parking right up front because Kevin's past champion, and we get out of the car and we go to work. Okay. So for both of you guys, pretty much straight from the course and back to the hotel or the house, I can't imagine there's much to do uh, outside the house or the hotel right now. No, there. you know, the, the tour is really – they, they haven't made it mandatory, but they really want to staying in one place, not going out, uh, eating at the regular, you know, local establishments, uh, having a couple beers. So it's pretty much when you get done, you go, we go back to the house. Um, I picked up food twice. And other than that, we've had delivery every single day and, and we haven't been to anywhere until um, last night. I went out to the wine store and bought, uh, my host some bottles of wine to put in their cellar. So other than that, uh, yeah, it's golf course, sleep, golf course, sleep. Um, you just keep on doing the same thing over and over again. Probably going to do that for probably the next three or four weeks. And Crispy, how about you at the hotel? Do they have anything set up specifically for you guys uh, dining wise or are you kind of on your own there? Yeah, they don't have anything sp set up sp specifically, but uh, there's two restaurants here. There's a Bob's Steakhouse, and there's a place called Whiskey and Rye, and um, I've eaten at Whiskey and Rye twice now, um, salad and salmon, and uh, had a drink at Bob's with Jimmy Walker and Scott Sajanak one night, um, and then uh, 
Scott and I actually walked to uh, dinner two nights this week uh, in town here in Fort Worth, and uh, both places we ate at were fairly empty and at least six feet, if not more, from other tables, uh, probably especially more. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it was kind of weird. You know, it's been strange going out to eat. I mean, the first like the with the Chipotle thing and not feeling great after eating that we uh we did another dinner out at a great Mexican joint here in town that we go to every year usually and um got massive U.S. portions like we always do and over ate and felt bloated again because we at home we weren't serving ourselves that much um but it's it's kind of getting used to eating out and being on the road again but also being careful and you know, carrying my mask when I needed it. I mean, I didn't wear it a lot, but I had it in my back pocket in case I felt uncomfortable and sanitizer on in the pocket and, you know, washing your hands till they're dry and cracked. Right. Anything about these new protocols, Kenny, that has made your job maybe more difficult or more annoying or anything that's made it easier? Hmm. It's a good question. Um, you know, I, th I think the biggest thing is, is you're, you're not talking to your friends like you normally do, uh, being right next to them, you know, giving them a hug when you first see them, when you first arrive. Uh, there are a couple of players that kind of came a little close, which, you know, I had no problem with because we've all tested negative. Um, but the protocol is, is, you know, you're not supposed to be high-fiving or hugging or handshaking anyone. So, you know, sometimes you forget. You know, you get excited when you see a good friend or, or a player that you're close to. Um, easier? Uh, well, it's, I think the easy thing is, is that you don't have to deal with, um, you know, Colonial gets big, big, fan, big number of fans. So sometimes getting from T box, but, you know, or going down to the driving range because it's all roped out and there's lots of people and, and autographs, not that we're doing it, but for the players, you know, it's made their life a lot easier. Um, a guy like, a guy like, uh, you there? Yep. I don't know what okay. happened. Yeah. I had a phone call coming in. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, you know, a guy like Phil Mickelson who signs autographs for 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 minutes, when he gets done, you know, he no longer has to do that. And, you know, who knows when autograph session, where the signing is going to come back, you know, we might not see that for the rest of the year. So for the players, I think it's, it's not that it's easier. It's just that their time, uh, their required times to do other things is going to be uh, for, for the, for the big, big players, the guys that sign lots of autographs, like, uh, Ricky Fowler and probably Phil are the biggest. They're going to see a lot more time to themselves and being able to um, maybe go work out a little longer if they if you can go to. Actually, there's no gym, so you can't go work out. But uh, for us, I don't I don't see any more difficulties. I think it's it's actually gotten easier to be honest. Mm -hmm. And crispy, I was just curious too with this long layoff that you guys had almost three months. Can you remember the last time you were able to spend that much time at home? I mean, even when you kind of have that break towards the end of the fall and the, until January, it's not that long. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to say it had to be 2002 TJ and that's the year before I started caddying. I mean, I started caddying in 03 and uh, I don't think I've had three months at home consistent since oh two um even like when i do get a long break off at home since i've been caddying in oh three to now um i'm a traveler i mean i snowboard i love live music so even if i have you know a, a month to two months off during the seat or you know a break during when i'm caddying i'm gonna go home for a bit and then i'm gonna go see some concerts wherever it is you know i'm gonna go to atlanta to the fox theater or Milwaukee Riverside or I'm going to go snowboard out in Vail or um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I got a traveling bone so it's I haven't had that long at home since I've been doing this job and that's why in the beginning uh, I was like all right hopefully this doesn't last that long and uh, it was kind of not I wasn't used to it and then as time went on I 
started to enjoy being at home in my house and, you know, doing a few things, fixing some things up and waking up and going for a hike or going mountain biking or, you know, showing up at the golf course with my carry bag and going to play some golf or, I mean, I, I can sleep. I, I slept till 12 o'clock a lot of days too. Um, but to what Kenny was saying, I, I did overhear Phil saying uh, on the putting green, uh, I think it was after the Thursday round, uh, he was with his coach and his brother. And I heard him say, man, this is pretty enjoyable to be able to practice after the round and, you know, putt and chip and hit some balls. Cause I think, you know, he's got such people are yelling at him and pulling him every which way that after a round, he usually takes off and doesn't practice much or he goes to another course nearby and practices where it's more quiet. So um, I do think the players are enjoying the time that they don't have to do signing autographs or getting yelled at just while they're putting. And, you know, I mean, it's uh, the fans are great and they make the sport happen, but it's also kind of enjoyable and quiet out there to get your work done. And uh, it's, uh, it's different. That's for sure. I'd say the one thing that uh, the annoyance that you were asking Kenny about, about the new, the new normal out here is the tour wants us to be careful with the flags and the rakes and have, wipes and so uh I would have these sanitizing wipes in my bib and I'd keep one out of the plastic packet in my bib so if I had to grab the flag I'd put it in my hand grab the flag with the sanitizing wipe in my hand hold the flag in one position and then put it back in so I didn't well, wasn't cleaning the whole flag I just had a wipe in my hand and same with the rakes uh I'd grab the rake in one spot with the wipe in my hand and rake the bunker. And that's pretty annoying, uh, especially when you got a hundred degree heat in Texas. I don't think anything's living on that. Um, but they want us to do it. So I'm following the rules along, you know, as best I can. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's different, but it's a, uh, it's good to be back. And it's a little more, like Kenny said, you can't talk to your buddies real close and uh, maybe tell them stories that you want to, no one else wants you don't want anybody else to hear because if you're six feet away someone's probably eavesdropping so there's not as much whispering or caddy talk you know about stuff that's going on you know with you and your player or you and other caddies at night type of stuff sure now did you guys have a deal amongst the other two caddies in the group in terms of the flag stick once you got to the green was it just one guy handling it or how did that work out uh, went by CNR already, so I didn't have to touch any flags or I didn't have to break any bunkers. <laughs> Actually, who was I paired with? I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, just uh, – you know, the funny thing is, is the first – the second hole, Mickelson hits his second shot in the bunker on the par five, and, you know, we were up there to like four feet, so I went and I went to go get uh, the bunker for Tim, Bill's brother. And there's a there's a wipe on on a thing. I'm like, how the hell did this get here? You know, and obviously Tim put it there. But I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, I was thinking to myself, you cannot contract the coronavirus in a hundred degree heat in the sun, especially with something that's been sitting there for ten minutes from the other group coming in. But I get it why we're doing it because it's all precautionary. So we all do it. Uh, but in all honesty, I I really I really didn't really hold the flag that much on Thursday. And if I did, I just grabbed it by the flag and not the pole. So nobody's wiping down the flag. Uh, you're wiping down the pole, but you probably should have been wiping down the flag as well. But how long would that have taken? So nobody was doing it. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I was a little better yesterday. I actually had a wipe with me yesterday so that if I did touch it, I, I, I did the right thing, which is the right thing to do. Um, mm -hmm whether I believe it's, I'm going to catch her or not, but you do what you got to do. Sure. I remember talking to a few caddies last week that were wondering what the pace of play would be like out there too, with the new protocols and, and whatnot. Did you notice any difference in pace of play? Did it take longer? Was it shorter? Did the lack of fans cancel out? Maybe any delay there would have been go with you, Kenny. Uh, well, yeah, the place of play was a lot slower and, and, it, and it had nothing to do with, it had to do with 148 man field. You know, this field is usually 120 plus past champions that would normally not get in the older guys. So, 
Um, with, with that being said, you saw a, a lower cut this year because of it. The cut was two under. I don't think it's ever been two under here. Uh, with being 20-something more players. I think there were 68 players at two under. So it probably would have been one under. Um, but the place of play, like we we had – the golf course is full. You got 148 players on this golf course, so there was nowhere to go. Um, it wasn't that it was slow. It's just that you never – I don't – I would bet there wasn't one group that got time in the yeah. last two days because the golf course was pretty much – there was nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So the pace of play was definitely slower, but that was because of the field was a lot larger. And Crispy, did you find it strange out there with no fans? Yeah. I'm not going to lie though. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, no, there I'm, actually were, there actually were fans, but they were, on the, they were on the outside and then you had, a, you had a party oh. tent on, 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 uh, on the 15th hole that some, some resident built. And then there was stands over on the other side of the 16th tee box that, uh, you know, their re resident had his stands and they were, they were announcing, it was awesome. So they, Kevin started walking up and he was the first, you know, to hit. So they announced him from South Korea. He's, he's an American, by the way, get it right. Uh, <laughs> and then Phil Mickelson. So it was kind of cool in that little corner right there. Uh, but other than that, you had on the perimeter, you know, around three and four and, and 15, you had people that were looking in on the other side of the fence. So there wasn't many, there was probably 50 people other than the two party houses. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was surprising because I actually thought it would have been a lot more people up against the fences. I thought it would have been like all the way around people watching from, from four and five there, but, or three and four um, in five T box, but there weren't that many people which was surprising. We, we dealt with a pro I heard a protest yesterday too, alongside number, I think it was number four, the par three. Heard some people marching over there for uh, one of those protests going on too. Mm -hmm. Nice not to hear the, the mashed potatoes and the baba buoys out there though. Now that needs to be eliminated. It's yeah, embarrassing. Right? <laughs> it's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it, I mean, most of the time, I mean, I don't know if Kenny will agree or not, but, fans for a caddy can be a lot more of a nuisance than anything because we're watching guys getting ready to make a phone calls our guys over right. the ball or you know his phone rings and he's taking the call right there like it's no big deal like he's in his bedroom um you know um yeah I th yeah I, i'd agree with that crispy you know the the, the good thing is is 98 percent of the fans are really good but it's the two percent the people that you know, start tackling because somebody's telling a joke and they have no idea where they are. They're actually watching a golf tournament. And those 2% of the people are, are, are a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to play Phoenix Open like this. <laughs> Boy, would that be a different <laughs> turn, huh? So, uh, I mean, not I so love, daunting. I, I love the Phoenix Open. So I, I, that's like the one tournament I really look because, I mean, it's, it's the most amazing people watching of all time, all the drums falling all over each other and beautiful <laughs> women with barely any clothes on and uh, – but but to me that's just once a year. If it was every if it was every week, it would be uh, it would be horrendous. Mm -hmm. So guys, without fans out there, were there any instances where anybody in your group maybe hit a wayward shot that took longer to find or anything like that since there weren't fans out there? I didn't, it. I didn't notice anything. Uh, you know, the rough was kind of deep this week too. I thought they'd have it cut down a little lower to pace of play and lost ball type issue, but. The Bermuda was pretty thick. Um, we still had more than enough volunteers, I felt like, um, to find the ball. And uh, we definitely had some balls way offline this week um, with my guy. He was uh, – <laughs> he was. we were going all over the golf course. There was a couple times I was trying to figure out yardages from – super far away and uh we found every ball um that we hit offline um uh, either the volunteers found it or you know i just kept an eye on it and was able to find it but i we didn't have any issues and uh you know the rough was deep um it wasn't shorter than i expected or shorter than i thought like i thought it would be to help pace the play and not lost ball so i don't know kenny do you guys have any issues with that you know, we, we, we really didn't, and I was surprised. They did top it off Wednesday night, but it was still thick. The ball would go to the bottom, and you, unless you're on top of it, you'd find it. But like you were saying, there were a lot of volunteers out there in the areas where the balls were going, so they had them in the right places. They weren't 
there weren't many on the weather, any on the tee that I saw, uh, and none around the greens, but in the fairways, they were there. So, um, the numerous times that I think Phil might've hit five or six fairways the whole day. So he was like, Jimmy, he was all over the place. Um, and we never had a problem. The, the volunteers were, were out there and, and put a, put a flag there. So yeah, there was no issues. And I don't believe I've heard of anybody losing a ball for, okay. the, for the first few days. So you guys have brought up Sag a few times on the, the call here. And for those listening, Sag, Scott Sajnik, president of the APTC, caddies for Jason Duffner. And he told me earlier this week that Duff had a, a very good plan in place in terms of early in the week for practice because of the heat. Um, and I'm sure you guys do that anytime you go to a spot where the, the weather is the way that it is there. But I'm just wondering, since they were kind of so pinpointed with what they were going to do, whether it was nine holes or go chip and putt for two hours and that was it, what the hell are you doing with all your downtime? Because you can't really get out. So, Crispy, starting with you, what are you doing when you're not at the course? Are you just locked in that hotel room? Yeah, well, I'm staying with Sag. So, yeah, right. I mean, uh, we uh, – we go to the course, we'd come back. Um, we, I mean, we do our work, come back. And then, uh, I mean, we didn't, you know, it's funny. We didn't watch that much TV. I thought we'd be watching a lot more TV. Um, we've been listening to Tom Petty radio on XM and, uh, he is inundated with emails and, uh, all kinds of stuff. We, we got the health insurance going for a caddy association right now, which is awesome. We got a group plan that just got launched and, uh, He's been doing that and, uh, you know, I, yeah, a lot of sitting around. Uh, I've walked around Fort Worth a little bit. I've definitely been outside uh, checking it out. It's kind of quiet and dead. So it's like you're in a big city, but there's no one around, which is kind of weird, but also nice. Um, I mean, I love people. People are great, but I'm also a, a bit of a loner and I like my space. So you know, to be able to walk around big city and just check it out while it's quiet and not too many people around was cool. But yeah, just a lot of downtime, chilling out. Um, him and I have been catching up, just talking shit. And, you know, that that's about it. I mean, yeah, I can't really, I mean, it's a lot of boring downtime, not so much going out, not, you know, just relaxing. Mm -hmm. And Kenny, how about you? No, I, I saw one pizza review early on, but is that killing you not to get to these pizza joints? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Sunday. Well, I got in on Friday. So my, my nephew picked me up and we went down to my brother's lake house. And on the way back, I said, you know, I'm going to be staying with Kevin. So let's pick up a pizza. And we went to this place called the Black Cat, which was highly recommended by some of my um, followers on Instagram. And it turned out to be um, not so good, but uh, it broke these six points. So I think it was a six one or two, which I was probably pretty generous with them considering it was the first first pizza view I've done in three months but uh yeah it's um it's driving me nuts because I'm a huge guy to go to the gym either after I get done working or early if we've got a late tea time and I haven't been to a gym since they closed LA Fitness in Orlando which was I think the end of um I think it was April 1st so yeah coming back to the house and just chilling last night I did Kevin's laundry and my laundry um and I haven't really watched any TV since I've been here. So it's been pretty much making, uh, having fun on, on Facebook, uh, with all my liberal friends and, uh, <laughs> conservative friends and not saying which one I am. I'm, I lean right. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, nobody would ever know it by your post. Nobody will ever know it. You know what? I, I, my dad always taught me, he says, look somebody in the eye and tell them the way you feel. Don't ever tell them what they want to hear because you know, that's just the way I was brought up. Um, yeah, I am opinionated. Uh, which, you know what I, I, but I respect other people's opinions. I don't, you know, it's, it's, I like learning from other people as well. So, uh, a lot of Instagram, um, checking out other people's posts and thinking of creative things to do with the caddy network for the Instagram. Um, but it's hard because, you know, you're stuck indoors. Um, and I'd love to be going hitting a pizza place every week this week, but, uh, maybe, maybe tonight I'll, I'll, uh, get one done, but. Yeah, it's kind of boring. It's really boring. And I'm a I'm like I'm like crispy. I'm a people person. I love being around people. I love telling stories and um hanging out with friends, drinking wine and you know, it's uh it's hard because I you know, getting back to Crispy, you know how he had you know, he got to spend a lot of time at home. It was the same thing with me. 
my mom was um, my mom had both her knees redone last year in Orlando because she lives in Pennsylvania, so the weather would be more conducive for her to doing her rehab and everything. So she had to do her one year checkups, and then the coronavirus is, and she's seventy five, and her boyfriend's seventy eight. So I just had them stay at my house and had them quarantined because they're the ones that are in danger. So it was kind of nice, to, but you know, it's you know, April first, I had no gym, so I kind of had a makeshift gym and in, in my garage but I didn't have any weights the only weights I had was from my ex-wife and I think we went up to like 15 pounds so a lot of push-ups and stuff but you know I've done some push-ups in the morning and that's about it it's been uh been frustrating probably is a good word not being able to go out and you know do the things you normally do but you know we're pretty fortunate being able to back get back to work and being able to travel and the PGA tour has done a hell of a job getting us back out here. So, mm -hmm. uh, really appreciate their efforts and, and hopefully, you know, their efforts go moving forward that we can continue doing, uh, playing and caddy in the game that we love. Mm -hmm. Now we saw some mixed reports at colonial about guys, uh, taking the protocol very seriously and then others, maybe not so much. I'm just curious as to what your experience was. And I think, to be fair, it's different for everybody, right, Kenny? Because you, for instance, you're staying with Kevin, so you feel safe with him. But did you guys notice anything on the course that just looked at, like business as usual, or were guys, you know, serious about the protocol? You know, I, I think that, you know, with everybody, you know, all the players and caddies being tested negative and, and hopefully that they're doing the right things during the week, not to contract it and then to give it to other players and caddies. Um, you know, and that's where it comes in from the social distancing. You know, I, I think that everybody, you know, it's, it, it's when you're, when you're out in conversation, it's very easy to forget about it. You right. know, when you're walking down a fairway telling a story and there's, you know, everybody wants to hear the story. So everybody's listening and they're all walking together they might not be six feet apart. They might be three feet apart. Um, on the practice round on Tuesday, you know, we were on the 17th tee box and camera, I don't know if he was a PGA tour works for the PGA tour, but he comes up and he starts saying stuff to us about high fiving and this and that. And you can't like how Kevin said, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was very polite. And we walked off. I said, what was that about? Nobody in our group was high fiving or giving knuckles during a practice round. Why would you? But I guess some other people were doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's times when, you know, I saw a couple of players that I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, there's been one or two that came up and gave me hugs, you know. And I don't, I didn't have a problem with it because I know that they've already tested negative. But it's not, you know, part of what we were supposed to be doing. So, you know, you forget sometimes. and But you try to do the best job you can. And that's all we can do. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Christy, how about your experience? Um. Yeah, I saw a little bit of everything. You know, I saw people giving fist bumps. I gave some fist bumps on the knuckles too. I mean, I saw some handshakes. I didn't get any doing any hugging or any getting that close. And, you know, I think uh, everybody's got their own opinion too. I mean, no one really knows. No, no, there's no right answer to this thing that's going on, obviously. And no one has the answer or else we'd be all be, everybody be back to work. Right. We'd be, good to go and a lot of people have opinions and I think some people just do whatever they think is right um you know like I'm I don't do politics so but I know like the people on the right feel like everything's fine and they can do whatever they want and the people on the left think we should be shut down and not be leaving our house and I I kind of just do what I think is right um whatever that is and it's not a political thing it's more of trying to keep myself healthy and everybody else healthy. Uh, luckily I don't have young kids or uh, older parents that I have to worry about them, but I'm just thinking about whatever's right for the general public. Um, and, you know, I saw, like I said, I saw everything. I saw guys taking it super serious. Todd Montoya, a caddy for Ryan Stewart. He's wearing a mask outside full time, <laughs> 100%. Oh my God. I love him, but Oh my God. Todd Montoya is a great guy. He's a yes, good he caddy. Is. He does a lot of work, preparation. He's prepared and loves his job like Kenny and I do. But, um, yeah, he's going mass full-time, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen him. I mean, he's mm -hmm. the only one. Um, and him and his guy are doing the full-on 
Uh, he puts the bag down. His guy grabs the club out of the bag, hits his shot. The guy, his guy, Brian, puts the club back in the bag. I don't know if he's cleaning it or not, but he puts the club back in the bag. T- Todd's six feet away while he does all that. Brian leaves might be, the bag. He might be 12 feet away. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think Todd might have set that up uh, anyway because uh, he might be enjoying the six feet break from his guy anyway. <laughs> 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 Most of us know <laughs> Brian's a great guy, but he can he can uh, let Todd have it or whoever his caddy is have it about how he's playing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've seen a little bit of it all. I haven't done one handshake, and I'm fine. I don't ever have to shake a hand again the rest of my life as far as I'm concerned. I think that's overrated. But, you know, fist bump, uh, you know, it'd be nice to get a little closer to your buddies and talk, but uh, – for now, you know, you just do what you think's right. And like Kenny said, the tour is taking all the precautions and they don't want to, they don't want to screw it up. They don't want to, you know, we're the first big sport back. I know you got like car racing and MNA or whatever it is, you know, the fighting going MMA, on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got corn, the cornhole too, man. Cornhole That's right. Are <laughs> right. I forgot. I forgot those guys. I didn't know that those that guys with the sport. mask on too. Yeah. Those guys <laughs> oh, yeah. are big time athletes. I've seen some really <laughs> good physiques in that um but yeah i mean I, the tour doesn't want to screw it up i mean they they want to set a good example and i think you know we're doing as best we can i mean not everything's going to go the way they want it like you're, the, you're, the player's going to pull the club from the bag like they always do i mean i don't see any caddies pulling the club out of the bag to give to them prior to each shot but after they hit their shot they're hand the club back to you <laughs> what do you do kenny Oh, I give him the club all the time. Oh, you pulling it out for him? Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, I, let's let's face it. I mean, in all seriousness, we're staying in the same house. We drive into the same car. We're literally two feet apart when we get in that car together. Um, he's tested negative. I've tested negative. We are together all the time. The only time we're not together is when we're at the golf course. He goes and eats, and I go and eat. That's it. Other than that, we have been together from day one all the way through. So uh, nobody in this country has tested positive playing golf. That's been proven. Um, so when it comes to me and Kevin, you know, we're not hugging each other. You know, we, we didn't shake any hands. We gave fist bucks, but we're, uh, I, I, if he wants a different club and we're in between, I pulled the club out and I handed it to him. Yeah, yeah, that, that's understandable. Uh, yeah. But, I yeah. mean, most of the time, as a caddy, you know, you're doing your work, you're talking about what club it is, and then they yank it out and walk over. Right. I mean, that's kind of part 100%. of the team, right? Yeah. yeah, 100%. But then, yeah. as soon as they hit the shot, I mean, they're handing it off to you. You take that club that they just hit, and I'm pounding in the divot because it's Bermuda. Mm-hmm. It's not replacing. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. you're kicking it in with the club, toe head, toe head of the club, and, you know, you're cleaning that – head and put it in the bag and you're off and going that's totally normal i mean they're not going to put the club back in the bag and clean the club and no yeah i mean that's that ain't happening well Um, unless you're uh unless you're todd montoya (laughs) 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 they're they're following the rules to the t but who knows he he, i bet he's enjoying it (laughs) now you guys he's gonna make it he's gonna make a great wife someday (laughs) <laughs> you guys both have experience on the LPGA, I believe, for you, right, Crispy? I know Kenny has. Have you been no, LPGA? Or you, no, I've done not? every tour now except for that one. Except, okay. Just curious to hear what you guys think about the decision that they made to make caddies optional for the rest of 2020. Uh, they don't start until end of July at the earliest. So caddies out there that I've talked to, as you can imagine, are very disappointed that they couldn't see how things play out on your tour first before making a decision like that. But what do you think about optional caddies on a professional tour for the remainder of this year? Go ahead, Crispy. I, I think it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I think that's terrible. I mean, it's our job. I mean, that's – what are they going to do? Are they going to have a push cart? I mean, I don't know. What, what, what's the deal? I think they have to carry if they go without a caddy. I don't think they're allowed to use a cart. But, you know, like the caddies out there have said, they haven't been out since February. Now they don't go back until July, late July at the late at the earliest. And, oh, and in another tournament just got canceled. Everyone right. just got canceled as well. Yeah. 
I, I don't, I, that, that's, that ain't right. I mean, do what we're doing out here. You do the saliva test before you leave your house to come to the tournament. You pass that, okay? You get to the tournament, you go take your nasal swab test, you wait three, four hours, you pass that, you're clean. You work that week. I mean, and then you be careful during the week. You don't go out partying. You don't go meeting chicks at the bar and hooking up. I mean, you do what you're supposed to do and everybody's good to go. And then you go to the next week and you do your nasal swab and you, I mean, they're taking away someone's livelihood. And that's what Kenny and I do. That's how we make a living. I mean, I've been 18 years now and I mean, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Um, I mean, I would be pretty pissed if I was on the LPGA and, and hopefully none of the players do that. But if right. my players said that I'd start looking for another player because I'd be like, what, you don't even, so apparently you don't value me at all. Cause you just think you can carry your own bag and it's not going to fatigue you. And you're not going to, it's not going to cost you one shot a day or one shot a week by carrying your own bag which could be the difference of winning and losing. Yeah. Kenny? You know, I think that uh, Commissioner Juan has done a hell of a job with that LPGA Tour. Um, I give him a lot of credit, but he made a big mistake in that decision. Um, and my understanding is of what I've read about it is that he didn't want any local caddies. Right. Well, that's fine. You know, talking to because i still have friends out there they say there's only three to six or seven players that take local caddies um and they can be responsible for hiring a friend uh to me it's it, it's pretty sad because you know they've always said that the lpga tour is one big family well guess what he just proved it isn't um and this is my opinion um i think he really re ne needs to rethink this um, cause you can always change it. They're not starting for another two months, but, uh, there's no reason why every player on that tour doesn't have a full-time caddy, especially in the situation that we are today, because it's going to be even more difficult for those players. And it's not fair to the players that they're playing with that two of the players in the group have a caddy and that player doesn't. So, you, you, you got to realize what entails when it comes to a caddy, how many times that we are helping the other caddy player getting a bunker, cleaning their ball. It all adds up. It all takes time. And I think he's going to realize he made a mistake. And, and I wouldn't be surprised, you know, by the time they start that he changes that. And hopefully he does. It's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Pace of play. It's going to be a pace of play issue. As well. Yep. Yeah. Are either of you guys on the charter flight for uh, Hilton Head? I'm not. Negative. No? No, okay. I'm flying home. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going home. I'm supposed to go home Sunday night um, and then drive up. Uh, the players don't have courtesy cars next week. So I figured I, the easiest thing for me to do is to fly home and then you know load up my car and drive up there and then drive back and then fly to Jackson or fly up to Hartford if we fly. And that way, you know, I'm staying with Kevin again in the house. We're in the same situation. It's uh, so I'm I'm getting on Air Harm Southwest and flying home. <laughs> and Crispy, are you heading out to go pick up your your caravan? Yeah, uh, must be pretty a, excited about that. It's been a I'm while. For, yeah, it's gonna be good to get back with the van. It's been uh, what players March 14th. I left it in uh, Fernandina Beach, Florida, with some friends uh, flying. I got it right now. I'm booked on a 6 p.m. flight to Jacksonville tomorrow night, but I might change that to go earlier tomorrow, Southwest, um, in the Jayville, get the van, um, head on up to Hilton Head either Sunday or Monday, get that nasal swab done as soon as I can, pass that, and have the car. Jimmy told me he's playing Colonial th this past week where we missed the cut, playing Hilton Head, skipping Hartford, and then. The plan is to play Detroit and the two at Muirfield Village. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting in the van. My biggest thing is I'm not sure what I'm doing on my week off, if I'm going to 
spend it, you know, traveling on the road, camping, playing some golf, you know, kind of going solo, being careful if I'm going to try to fly back home to Reno for a quick five days at home or six days at home and then come back out. Um, that's the only thing that's up in the air with me right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, Southwest has been pretty good. I'm, I think Kenny and I are both big Southwest users. They've been awesome during this quarantine thing. I had a ton of money that was going to expire in September. And Morning, Kev. They pushed it off to 2022. Yeah, cool. Guys, last question for you. What did you think of the new absolutely yoked Bryson DeChambeau this week? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, go ahead. <laughs> Boy, I, I love Bryson. He's, he's one of my favorite guys out here. Uh, he's so misunderstood. But then, you know, I don't know how – his his calorie intake has got to be through the roof. I mean, for him to get as big as he has gotten – and he's puffy. I mean, he's taking his – I mean, he's puffy and big. and But you know what? He's one shot out of the lead, so. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got to say. He's one shot out of the lead. I wish I had half of his drive to change my body. Yeah. Said five to six protein shakes a day. Kenny, put that in perspective. I know you're, you're really into so, that. Well, yeah, but the problem is it's, 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 it's actually if, – if I would bet that those protein shakes have about 1,200 calories in each one of them or 1,500 calories because he's – it's not the protein that's going to do that. He's gotten – he's don't get me wrong, he's put a lot of muscle on, but he's got a lot of fat on his body too. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. Big thanks to Kenny Harms and Crispy Jones for joining the Under the Strap podcast. I'm TJ Oakley. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week with another podcast. Until then, stay safe, everybody.